Ça, non. Non, rien. Do you mean we're all going to be dead soon? What does that mean? No, I think eventually the, a computer will develop which has self-awareness. And it will do what we were doing, exactly the same situation. It will take over. Mm. It might keep us as pets because we're amusing. I'd be a good pet. I'm already willing to concede. <laughs> So, page 154. And we'll start from Lot's Chumim on page 4, or did we do that yesterday? We did that yesterday. Okay, so I think we were starting with Mativ Rava. Okay, Mativ Rava. Rav challenged this. Mechalal et hashabai bedavar shechayevin al shigagato chatat. One who desecrates the Shabbos by doing something for which one is subject to a chatat. When done inadvertently, chayevin al zedono sekila is subject to stoning when he does it intentionally. Yep. Fair enough. Ha ein chayvin al shigagato chatat. But if one is not subject to a chatat, when it's done inadvertently, ein chayvin al zedonoskila. He's not subject to stoning when it's intentional. Okay. Good. Thus, if inadvertently leading an animal to perform a malacha does not require a chatat, intentionally doing so cannot require stoning. Good question. Miktane. Did the Mishnah say this explicitly? Ha'en chayvin kule. But if one is, sub- is not subject to. But if one is not subject to a chatat, etc. Hachikama. Ah, Mikatane. Did the Mishnah actually say, Ha in Chayvin Kule? But if one is not subject to a Chatat, etc.? No, it didn't phrase it like that. Ha Kamar. This is what the Mishnah meant to say, perhaps. Davar Shechayvin al Shigagato Chatat. Something for which one is subject to a Chatat. When it's done inadvertently, Chayvin al Zono Sekila, one is always. One is subject to stoning when it is done intentionally. But there is something for which one is not subject to a chatat when it is done inadvertently. But for which he is subject to stoning when it is done intentionally. And what's that? Mechamer. Leading a laden animal. So... So, according to this, one is not subject, when leading an animal, one is not subject to a chatat when you do it inadvertently. Ah, but so if just you have to maybe deliberately, then you're liable to stoning. So, this ah. is the exception to wow. the rule. That's a big exception. Hmm. So, you can inadvertently lead it so it just follows you, I suppose. It's just following you. How did your donkey come beside you all this way? Just me. Well, I suppose. How come your donkey's following you? What do you mean? How come my donkey's following me? It's Shabbat. Ah! Uh, Shabbat. Shabbat. I think that. Then I think that's more like much better. So then, you're not liable to for a chatzah. No. Um, but if you actually said, "Come on," immediately after you've been told. Immediately after, and you know it. Regardless, you know it's Shabbat. Well, put it this way: unless you admit that you know it's Shabbat, there's no way they can prove it. That's true. Okay. So it's only if you've just been told that they can be certain that you've done it deliberately, and they can stone you. Yeah, except, except, I hear that. Except numerous times we've had this thing where it says, "And they have been warned." 
That's not here. Um, Rava Kulha de Rama. So, what I was saying before was that there's no mention of warning in this case, but I suppose you're right. Mm. It's like Rava Kulha de Ravmari Barachel. Take the footnotes on him if you want to go ahead. Uh, Rav Mari by Rachel, he is also called Rav Mari, son of Shmuel's daughter, and was a Babylonian Amora in the generation of Rava. Rav Mari's unusual appellation can be understood in the context of Shmuel's family history. Shmuel's daughters were abducted, and two of them were brought to Eretz Yisrael, where one was taken by a Gentile who later converted. He was known as Isur, the convert, and was a confidant of the prominent uh, Jewish leaders of the generation in Babylonia. Mm. His son, Rav Mari, is attributed gene genealogically to his mother, rather than to his father, since Isur converted after Rav Mari was conceived. Other sages born to well-known mothers from prominent families were also known by their mother's names. So just to be clear, who was the, who was the one that was the convert? The father. The father. And it's interesting that he's known as Isur. Yeah. The convert. Forbidden the convert. Um, Someone had a sense of humor when they gave him his name of the conversion. And that's why he's called Barachel. Yeah. Uh, okay, several others are known by their mother's names, unrelated to problematic lineage. Since Rava is a combination of the title Rav and the name Abba, Rav Mari could not have been both the son of the sage Rava and the son of Isu of the convert. The version that identifies his father as Rava is referring to a different Rav Mari, Bar Rachel, who was known by the name of his mother for a different reason. Rav Mari, the son of Shmuel's daughter, was apparently a wealthy merchant in addition to being a prominent sage worthy of being appointed as an official in Babylonia. Rav Mari had three sons who were sages, Rav Ahasaba, Rav Zutra, and Rav Ba Rav Mari. Thank you. Rav Achuha de Rav Mari Ba Rachel, Vamre La Avuha de Rav Mari Ba Rachel. Oh, some say it was his father. The Lishna Batra, according to the latter version, Kashi Hadara Vachshare, the Rav Mari Barachel. It is difficult, difficult that in which Rav, Rav declared Rav Mari Barachel fit, Umanye Beforse to Bavel, and appointed him among the officers of Bavel. Apparently. Um, if a, um, a convert couldn't be appointed as an official of the Babylonian um, mm -hmm. sort of Jewish community, and it was nece necessary to stress the fact that his mother was Jewish for him to be appointed as he was. The convert of the son of two converts may not be appointed to a position of authority over Israelite Jews. The verse states in Dvarim, you must appoint, and the word for appoint is Som Tasim, Som Tasim, you must appoint over your king, who is from the midst of your brothers. Now the double expression, som tasim, literally appoint, you shall appoint, teaches us that any appointment made, even a minor one, should be conferred only on someone of native Israelite descent. I wonder how they get that one. Thus it would seem that Rav Mari Barachel could not legally serve as an officer. However, Rav ruled that he could because even though his father was not an Israelite, his mother was. And this is sufficient to render him from the midst of your brothers. Now, if Rav Mari Barachel's father was someone named Rava, a native Israelite, then it is obvious 
that Rav Murray fits as a minister. He's descended from two native Israelites. Good question. I don't know how he got there, but it's a good question. How did we get to this particular... Anyway. There's a slightly different uh, interpretation here. The sages interpreted the verse, From among your brethren you shall set yourself a king. Mm -hmm. To mean that only one born Jewish can be crowned king or appointed to any other position of authority. Even a convert who is a full-fledged Jew and obligated in all of the mitzvot cannot be appointed to these positions. Ralph ruled that one born to a Jewish mother and a non-Jewish father can be appointed to positions of authority other than king. Okay. Perhaps there were two different men named Mari Bar Rachel. And that's what we dealt with in the previous note, I read you. Yeah. Hava Matne la la hashamate, he would teach this ruling. Mishme, the Rabbi Yochanan Liftor, in the name Rabbi Yochanan, to exempt. One who drives a laden animal. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Hamechamer Achar. Behemto, Beshabbat Pato Miklum, one who leads his animal on Shabbos is entirely exempt. Beshogeg, lo Michael Chata, if inadvertently he is not liable for a Chata, to hook Shakol Hatora, Kula Lava Dazara, because all the provisions of the Torah must be to bring a Chata, uh, for bringing a Chata, must be analogous to idolatry. Bemezi. Nami lo Michael. Also, a laden animal being led intentionally, he's not liable. Ditnan. Mechala let a Shabbat bedavar shechayven ashigu gatol chatat. One who desecrates the Shabbos by doing something that is subject to a chatat when it's done inadvertently, while it's done no. Sekila is subject to doing when it's done intent when he does it intentionally. That's a problem. Ha and Khavin Ashigatol Khatat, but if one is not subject to a khatat when done in Ridley and Khavin al Zidano skill, then he's not subject to stoning when done intentionally. The love Nami Lomikhay, furthermore, he's not liable for transgressing a negative commandment. To have a le he's he is not here. liable to be flogged for violating a Torah prohibition. Ah. Brilliant. The love Nami Lomikhay is not even liable for lashes. For transgressing a negative command. Zahava, I wonder what the word is there that that made them perk up and say it's for lashes. I don't know. Nami Alam. Nami Lo. Ah, oh, you know what it is? Because for transgressing a negative commandment, it's, the penalty is lashes, so he's not even liable for that. To have a lay love shinitan la az harat mitat ben David. Sorry, ben din. This prohibition, do not do any malacha, serves as a warning. He's got of court imposed capital punishment. The prohibition. Do not do any malacha serves as a warning not to do any malacha on pain of liability for a court imposed punishment. Yeah? Yeah. It says capital punishment. Sorry, capital punishment. This actually says court imposed execution. It's about the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It goes on and for any prohibition that was given as a warning of court imposed capital punishment. If the death penalty is not imposed for any reason, one is not flogged for its violation. Mm -hmm. This is a warning. Okay. So what's the warning? The prohibition is the warning? Must be. Do not do any malachai is the warning. Okay. 154B. And even according to one who says that the prohibition does carry the penalty of lashes, the merciful one should have written, 
Lot Pasecho Malacha Vahem Secha. So you're not doing any Malacha and your animal. Meaning to understand with your animal. Atalamali, why do I need to wear you? Who Nihud Michaev? It is he who is liable. Vahem Cholo Michaev. But for the actions of his animal, he's not liable for them. Okay, so because it says Ata. Uh, it doesn't say a word like im, don't do any malacha with your animal. Yeah, how can you stop an animal from performing that? Although it's, you might as well not even mention it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like why bother putting it in there if you didn't have something to do with it? Well, I think that's part of the warning capacity. So why do you need the word you? So that's the purpose of the word you. Ah, that's the purpose of why it says Ata. Lamali, why do I need the word you? It's he himself who is liable for performing a prohibited labor on Shabbat. However, for a prohibited labor performed by his animal, he is not liable. Yeah. Mm. So that. So if you're leading the beast along, you know, some, some not. So you're. If it's, if it's following you. Yeah. Then. Uh, it's your fault for letting it follow you if you made it follow you. Yeah. But, but whatever it's doing, you can't be. You can't be held responsible. Higil achatera hi ha So. Next line of the mission is when he reached the outermost courtyard of the city and commences to unload the donkey, may take off any utensils that may normally be moved on Shabbat. However, those utensils that may not be moved on Shabbat because they are muksa, he may not move himself. Instead, he undoes the ropes that hold them fast into the saddle and the sacks fall down on their own. Amaru, mm. um, where's the painting, by the way? Are you, were you doing it in here? Oh, that's the painting. Oh. Is it dry? Hmm? Is it dry? It's been lacquered. And that's what you're smelling. It's dry, but you're still smelling. So it's finished? Yes. I've decided I was getting very tight, so I decided I would do a painting that would be loose enough. Tight. When you talk about painting, it should be very tight, or it can be loose. If you look at that, it's sort of everything, everything, and that is everything is controlled. Yeah. Um, there's no freedom. Okay. And this is just more expressive. Well, freehand. Yes, it, it appears that way, but actually, it's just as much planned as that was, because I'm incapable. <laughs> If his animal was loaded with glass utensils, 
מביא קרים וכסתות ומניח תחתיה. He can bring pillows and cushions, place them underneath the animal. ומתיר החבלים והסכין נופלים and loosen the ropes so the sex fall on them. Good. That's nice. Uh, is that on Shabbat or just before Shabbat? This is on Shabbat. But we learned in the Mishnah not to let Hakeli Mani Talim Beshabbos. He may take off any utensils that may be moved on Shabbos. Let me tell you that may be moved on Shabbos. And he's added, as glass vessels fall into that category, why not simply remove the glass vessels and then untie the bags? Is the comment that. Oh, yeah, that's right, of course. Ki kama Rav Huna bekarne d'omana. D'omana. Rav Huna stated in reference to pipettes of a blood letter. D'lo chazile. Which are useless on Shabbos and therefore muksa. Oh, I see. This is the glass pipettes. Mm. So that uh, that's why he has to do it in a different way because they're not necessarily used on Shabbos or not used on Shabbos at all. Bahaka. Mevatel kli mehechano, but he will be nullifying the preparedness of the utensil. How is that? Initially, the cushion was available for any use. Since it now has the set aside vessels on it, ah, uh, right. The cushion too may no longer be moved. The sage has ruled that one may not place a vessel in a circumstance that will render it prohibited to move. Gemara answers. Yeah. That's like um, destruction of a of a product. Mm. Okay. Um, Nullification for the duration of Shabbat. Mm. Uh, Bishlifei Zutri. This is in reference to small sacks of pipettes. And because of their small size, the sacks can be rolled off the pillows and cushions on Shabbat without being handled directly. So the pillows and cushions can still be used, I think because you can pick the pillow up and they won't get broken if they fall off. Meitive, they challenged it from a baraisa. All right, give us the baraisa. Haita, behem tot una tevel shashit. If his animal's loaded with untithed produce and glass bars, much just got chunks of glass. And chunks of glass. What's that? Tevel v'ashashit. I see. Matir et ha-chavalim v'ha-shakin. Sorry, v'ha-sakin noflin. He must loosen the ropes and let the sex fall to the ground. V'ha-pal pishe mishtabrin. Even though the glass, even though it will break by doing this, Ah, even though it will break by doing so. And keep on reading. Hatam bechulsa there about the glass uh, chunks. chunks refers to slabs of glass. So these are muksa and too large to be rolled off pillows and cushions. Therefore, they may not be allowed to fall onto pillows and cushions, since so doing so would immobilize. Them. And a note that he, I, I read it before that he's got is that what it, this, these glass chunks have in common with untied produce yes. is that they're but not... But can't touch. Well, no, they're not yet... Uh, there's another process that has to be done to them yes. before you can use them. Yes. And the glass chunks is useless. It's only when you... Melt it again and blow it into a as well. Yep. Uh huh. That's the the two why the two things are mentioned together. They have this thing in common. Okay. Uh, You know the way this is. I'm imagining this as well, Peter. Is that there may very well be a possibility, possibly, that the glass chunks are actually wrapped up in the produce 
for safety. That's why a little bit kind of... Uh, it could be. Uh, and the thing there is, would you be able to do that in the on the basis that if slivers of glass break off and find their way into the produce? Is that likely? Like, for example, it, it, glass can shatter and give off very small splinters. Yeah. And it I, I, I can see the possibility that you would, in, if you have to transport grain and glass from spot A to spot B, yeah. you might put the glass in the middle of the grain to save it from sort of mm. being broken accidentally or shattered when the, with the bag comes off. And also the anti produce could be anything that's not just grain, is it? Mm. Yes. 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 This is also uh, indicated by precise. Uh, this is also indicated precisely because the Barisa implies Gumia de Tevel bars are similar to untied produce. Matevel, the Lochazile, just as untied produce is useless to him. Ahachanami Lochazile, so to here, the glass in its current form is useless to him. And Mukta, or my Af Alpi Shimishtabrin, but then what is the point of saying, even though they may break? Because I think that's what it said in the Barasa. Even though they will break. Mahu de Temelehef said mu at nami chashashu. You might have thought that the rabbis were concerned with a minimal financial loss as well, as with a substantial one. Kamash Malan, the rabbi, the Brisa informs us this isn't so. The rabbis did not weigh this prohibition for the sake of minimal loss. The minimal loss being, according to him, um, yeah. The loss you might have in the breakage of the glass. Yeah. Little bits might be. Sort of right. Important. Little bits and pieces mm. you don't care about, but there'll likely still be chunks there. Yeah. It's not going to shatter into a thousand pieces. Yeah. Um, because glass in those days just isn't like the glass we have today. Today it shatters into a thousand pieces just because of the way it's manufactured, like tempered glass. Mm. But chunks can't shatter. They don't show, they, they, you splinter, they splinter and whatever. I think you'd even have trouble breaking one in two. Okay. In, what's the, what's the old English in, in twain or in asunder? No, that's a great asunder. Mahu the tamer lehes and more tanami khashish, oh, sorry, I said that. Tanya was taught in Brasa, Rabbi Shimo ben Yochai Omer, Haita behem tota una shlif shel tavua, if his animal was loaded with a stack of produce, untied produce, Maniach Roshot Tachteha, he should position his head under it. Maniach or short he should position his head under one end of it, and push it up to the other side, and the sack will fall off the donkey by itself. So he's using his head to push it off, basically. And there's a little note here. Doesn't have a picture? No, but they have other pictures below. Even though moving set aside items is prohibited in any manner, mm -hmm. it is permitted in this case because it involves moving the items in an unusual manner and failure to move them would cause suffering to a living creature, which of course is carrying. Which of course is carrying. Well, I mean, he did, I've added, which of course is carrying. In other words, you're doing this 
to get it off the poor bloody donkey's back, which otherwise would have to bear this burden all bloody Shabbat. Mm. And, and then there's a story that comes on about Gamliel's donkey that illustrates this. Hmm. That's a curious thing. The rabbis never forbade the movement of mukta with one's body. That's a strange statement to make. With one's body? With one's body. According to Ramban. Okay, maybe it'll come up. I think what they mean is by pushing or shoving or something of yeah. that nature, not by grasping. That's exactly what it means. I mean, that sounds like what, they're, what, it, what it means. Okay, actually, it says here there's something on page 141a about it. 141a. Ah, hakasha al gabe hamita straw on your bed. Lo yena aneno beado. You don't move it with your hand. Ela mena ano bekufo. You can move it with your body. I remember when we did that. Yeah. Hmm. Unless it was intended to feed an animal, in which case you could pick it up. Yeah. Correct. Very good. Okay. Kamoro shall Rabban Gamliel high tatsuk on a debash. The donkey Rabban Gamliel was loaded with honey, and Shabbat began. Velora to the porka ad mote Shabbat. But Rabban Gamliel did not want to unload the donkey until Saturday night. The mote Shabbat meta on Saturday night the donkey died. Nanshnam we learned, but we've learned in the Mishnah not to tell him how many tell him he can take off any utensils that may be moved on Shabbos. And obviously, honey is edible, so you should have taken it off. Because she fish. So, where the honey had soured and was mukta, that's why you didn't move it. Heat fish, lamai chazi, of what use is spoiled honey? Lich tita de gamle, to abrasions on a camel's back. The yatir chavalim vi pluk. Suck in, but he should have loosened the ropes and allowed the sacks to fall off. Hello. Mr. Ozike, the sacks would have split open and the honey would have been ruined. The Avi Karim Uchsatot. What he's got here is the jugs containing the honey would crack. Yeah. And that's the way he translates it. Then you go. That's to funny. Mr. Prohibition. 
Abai Ashkeche Leila Rabba. Rabbi Gamaliel really pisses me off sometimes. Mm. Not a nice person. He doesn't seem to trust in his good nature. He'd much prefer to be a prick. Yeah. And I think it's like a lot of people who prefer to be a prick. They're worried about being thought of as weak. Yeah. That sort of thing is one explanation. Yeah. I'll show everybody that I'm in charge of the best thing. And they don't really... What? This, what about your yates to talk? So, surely your good inclination would have said you're, gonna, you're about to kill a booyah of God. Mm. But it's not a rabbinic, it's only a rabbinic prohibition, so... And I balance that against my loss of money. Actually, it reinforces something else that, you know, that uh, we did a day or two ago about how the rabbis made special concessions for um, situations where people might lose money because uh, they were afraid that if they didn't people would actually do a full-scale breach of Shabbat in order to save their property. I think we did that. Say that again. That the rabbis took made special arrangements in relation to financial loss because of the fear that people would go into a full-scale breach of Shabbat unless they made some allowance for that and people not wanting to lose their money. Mm. You know, I mean, when the, in other words, you're carrying the money in the pouch. In you other know, words, you put, a practical side. Yes. You put it on your donkey. Why? Uh, you, you've got, you can give it to a goy or you can put it on a donkey. Why? Because they're afraid that if they don't make these concessions, you'll end up carrying it because you don't want to lose it. And why don't they allow you to do the same thing with something you found on Shabbat? Because you don't have that same attachment. It's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. Yeah. And it's just something you found. Yeah. Abaye Ashkeche le le rabba. Abaye wants to go to rabba. Deka Mishaf Shef le le agaba the Hamra. As he was sliding his son down the back of a donkey, from the back of a donkey, and he's added on Shabbat to entertain him. You know, Ooh, you're doing with a kid on the sort of family donkey. Ah, uh, so Abaye so rabba. Uh, Abai once saw Rabba mm. as he was Rabba was doing this with his son. Uh, Amale, Abai said to him, Kamishtamesh mar be baale chayim. You're making use of a living creature. It's prohibited on Shabbos. Amale, to does in him, these are Merely decides what said the din law goes to behold the rabbanan and the rabbis never decreed a prohibition against the size of the animal. Menar <laughs> temra. From where can you infer uh, this is so? Ditnam. We learned in our mission. Matya chavim of the hasakim. Not playing here. Note the ropes. Uh, and the sex falls down on their own. My love. Bechever. Bechever. Gubalke, mm. that's a nice word. My love, Bechever Gubalke. Is it not a reference to the cell bags? Uh, well, here he's got where one attached the bags by means of Gubalke, 
where the bags are strapped to the animals and the only way to loosen them involves leaning against the sides of the animal in order to unstrap them. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, you kind of do need to do that. And that is because it is a case of making use of the sides. So you can. The havel lehud tzadim, which would be using the sides, right? Well, tzadim law goes to a rabbanan, and the rabbis never decreed regarding the sides. Look, the chever ag valke. No, it's talking about untied untied saddlebags, and they're just. Whatever, they're just sitting there. But the here they use agalavki, which is similar sounding, but it's a different style of tying. And there they have a picture of. Oh, oh that's interesting. Catching what I mean of agalavki. Yeah. Al Algav, interestingly, is on, on the body, but on top of. Agal, what did you call it? Agalavki. Agalavki. In this method, the bags are attached by means of a strap. Each bag can be removed individually by detaching it from its strap, and it is not necessary to lean against the donkey. Hmm. The law have a look at him, we not tell the sides. Inami, alternatively, they joined with a clip, the lachta. A tivei rabba, abai challenged rabba from the Mishnah. Shtein bidei adam v'achatz be'ilan, if two, uh, this is the walls of the sukkah, mm. if two are made, a man made and one is a tree, the sheira ve'ein olin la, beyond top, it is valid, but one may not go into it on the festival, one may not go into the sukkah, or one may not go into the sukkah, into the sukkah on the festival day. He said it because it is prohibited to use trees <coughs> rooted in the ground on Shabbat or a festival. Yeah, I'm just curious the way it's written. It says the sheira, sorry, kashera, is valid. The ain olim, and you don't go up. Well, it's like uh, when you say, talk about going up to Israel, a sukkah is a sacred structure, so when you go into it, you'll go up. Yeah. But uh, I would have just said, in by in. Yeah. You don't come into it. My love, Dachak, be Ilan. How is the walls, how are the walls formed by a tree? Is it not that he carved holes into the tree and put the planks into the tree so it forms a post? Is that the way you understand it? More or less. Jahavu lehu tzadadin. And therefore, the schach is supported by the walls which were inserted into the tree. So... I suppose now it means to say that the parts that were inserted into the tree are the size of the tree, which is allowed to be used, like the donkey, the size of the donkey. Utsadadin asurin. So therefore, in that case, the size of the tree is forbidden, meaning you can't go into the sukkah. Lo, dechape... No, where he bent the tree over to form that actually made the tree into one of the walls and rested the schach directly on it. Okay, so that's the way we should be thinking about it. He bent the tree over and then put the schach over the top so the tree is the support. Yeah. Okay. Because he... He will be making use of the tree itself as the wall, and not just the sides of the tree as the post. Yeah. Yeah. Ihachi. If so, 
if the schach is uh, resting directly on the tree, the roof, yeah, if the schach is directly resting on the tree, that's going kind of sideways now. Aim a safer, consider the end of the Mishnah where it says, Shalosh bidei, bidei adam, vachas bilan. If three are man made and one is by a tree, it is valid and one may go into it in a fe- on a festival. Now, if the Mishnah refers to where it's bent over, where the tree's bent over, and the schach is resting directly on it, why are you allowed to go up into the suk- Why are you allowed to go into the sukkah on, on Yom Tov? Good mm-hmm. question. The Elamai, so what then is the explanation? Sedadin Asurin. So, the sides of the tree are in fact prohibited. And this is where the schach rests on a plank and the plank is supported by the tree. Sof, sof. But still, at the end of the day, Amayo lin la bionto. Why are you allowed to go into a festival? Good question. Oh, I was really hoping for a takeoff. Ella hatan big va big vaza par sichna. Rather, there refers to a branch with thick foliage. Rather, there it refers to a branch with thick foliage. So, in fact, just the so it's just the foliage being used as a wall. The Ilan Gufe Dofen Baalma Hud de Shave. He had the tree serve just as a wall. Daikanamit Katane. This is this is also a precise reading of the Mishnah because it says Zehakal. This is the general rule. Kol Ilu Shinatel Hailan vi Chola la Mod. Wherever the tree can be removed and the schach can stand, olin la beyontov. You can go into it on the festival. Shmamina. Ah, that's a nice little interesting fact. Hmm. So you can use the foliage of a tree as a wall. What do you think of that, Peter? That seems to refute a lot of common thoughts we brought up yeah. with today. That's true. I think the, the thing is that the other three walls have to be man-made. Yeah, because the three walls look is yeah. satisfactory. Yeah. Le shall we say? It's a dispute of the Tanaim. This is in regard to... Okay. Einolin la biyomto, women are going to the Sukhrona festival. Rabbi shum ben el mishum rabbi meir... All in Labi Yom Tov, you can go into it on a festival. My love, Behar can be flagged. not that they dispute. To Master of Saturday, not Surim. My master contends that the sides are prohibited. Or Master of Almaterian, and the other master contends that the sides are permitted. Amar Abay Lo. So Abay said no. The Chule Al Mataradin Asurin, for everyone, agrees that the sides are prohibited. And here they dispute the sides of the sides of the sides. And he's got an explanation of that. Yes. That is, not a wall leaning against the tree itself, but a wall that is supported by a beam that is placed in the hole carved in the tree. So the beam uh, that's stuck into the tree is the side mm-hmm. and the walls that are leaning against this are the sides of the sides and they're not prohibited. Ah. So everyone agrees that the sides are prohibited. The hacha betzideid sedadin kamifloge and here they dispute about the sides of the sides. Ma sava tzideid sedadin nasurim one master contends that the sides of the sides are prohibited. Ma sava tzideid sedadin motarin. Rava Amar, Manda Asabit Saradin, whoever prohibits the sides, Asar Nami Betside Saradin, prohibits 
the size of the size as well. So it prohibits the size of a tree, prohibits the size of the size of a tree as well. Man to show you today, today, and whoever permits using the size of the size of the tree, shari nami bit studin. Permits using the sides of the tree as well. So we have two completely different viewpoints. Okay. Then we have a Rasmah Shia basis and objection, but I think we can deal with that tomorrow. Yeah. Cool. Okay, okay. There we are, today's task completed. Yes, Kuah. Peter. Thank you, Peter King. Champion. <laughs> the young Rabbi Cohen, that substituted for Rabbi Yanendi today.